Welcome to Aquarius Rising Africa and welcome to Sunday. Happy weekend. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend and I'm very happy to have with me uh, today Caleb. Hello Caleb, how are you? Oh. Are you good? Yeah, can you tell him what happened? So I don't have to talk. Yeah, I can do that. Um, most definitely. So for those of you um, who haven't been um, tuning into the earlier shows, as you know, Caleb has not been well. Um, he had to go to the emergency room maybe a week ago now uh, with a bad kidney and a bladder infection. So hence um, having to cancel shows last week. But I know that you're back, Caleb, and I know you're feeling a lot better. He's been on some heavy antibiotics, and um, but feeling a lot better and <laughs> has been getting some more sleep as well. And as we know, sleep is a wonderful healer to many things. And I know <clears throat> from not having sleep all the time. And my cat is here, which is very rare. Can you show your face, please? There's a tail. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Very happy. I'll say more about it. At the end of the show, I'll talk more about that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm thinking that before we get a cook in, do you want to maybe open for us in prayer, please? Sure. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for some sleep, finally. Recovery. Your, your victory is in my recovery. I lean on you for everything, for my health, for my wealth, for my my everything. I thank you for, for being there through all this, sustaining me, protecting me. As that you make your Wisdom down through my words. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, and thank you for that. So, wow, guys. Um, finally, we're going to be talking about the <laughs> talking about the, the magics. Uh, we've been, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this for quite some time. Um, hello, everybody. Let me just say hi to you all in the in the chat. Can you guys all hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you well. I'll just make sure everyone in the chat can hear you. So if there's, if you guys can just give us a thumbs up or something, just let us know if Caleb is sounding strong. But I know from my side, you certainly are sounding strong. So we've got everyone in the chat. Nice to see you guys again. And the AC is running, so it's kind of loud in here. Okay. Yeah, that's no, good. I'm glad that you're loud. Uh, because, yeah, sometimes we get complaints that you're soft, but you're not too loud. So very happy that you are loud. So, yeah, we're going to be talking more about the magics. Um, Caleb, be stronger volume than Shanti. Well, you see, that's excellent. Can you hear me okay, guys? I'm sure I don't usually have a problem with my sound because I've got a quite a loud voice anyway. So that's all good. Um and thank you. I know everyone has been keeping you in their prayers as well, Caleb. So it's, it's one Your voice is that sharp brain pick I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Going up my nose. <laughs> Picking my <Well>. brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. We're going to be picking tonight, that's for sure, because we are to the, some very cool, well, for me anyway, and I hope you all agree with me. Uh, the last show we did, it was the, we did the introductory talk into the magics, uh, and we know there are 13 magics um, that are studied in the arcane. Um, Caleb has mastered all 13 of them. So I have to say I'm very blessed that you are willing to share. And I know, again, guys, he will share as much as what is he feels is he's not going to go into detail with anything. 
is not going to go into the processes of how these things are done, um, but he's going to give us the basic understanding of it. Because As we go along, you'll notice how it all fits together. Yeah, I would imagine. Absolutely. And, well, let's start with the first one that we have tonight, and that is illusion magic. Um, now, <laughs> for me, illusion magic, Caleb, is those guys on the stage. Like, you know, when you go and see those magic shows and they have a girl lying in the box and they cut the box in half and they move it. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, you then look as though you sliced in two. And I know I think a lot of that is done through mirror effects. I don't know. So maybe you can start you can start us with that. Like, you know. Can you show um, them the picture? Yeah, okay. Let me just go into I uh, just got the just give me a moment. Let me just find it here. There we go. And it's not super, super clear, but that would be is that the emblem or what it is for illusion magic, right? That's the first rune set you learn in the school of magic. Right. Not just this one, but th th that's what you see first. Is that right? Does this does this symbolize anything specific? I'm sure that it does. Can you maybe break down this rune for us and tell us pretty much what it's about? I won't break it down very far, but I can do some. Yeah. Okay. In the background of the big circle, <clears throat> what do you see a lot of? Well, lots of like uh, triangles and things. That's what I see. Triangles. Squares. See the squares? That's a spinning cube. Right. Right. Okay. I see the squares. They're bigger, but they create the triangles. Okay. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. That's what you find wow. inside that spinning cube. Wow. Okay. You see the Kia Solomon. It's not Solomonic magic, but it has a lot to do with it. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. What, what is that in the front? Is That that looks like the Jewish star. Or is it yeah, that? The, is it? the Key of Solomon. All right. Okay. So is that what's known as I was about to ask? Is that the Key of Solomon? Right. Wow. Okay, cool. And the second circle, or the, is it the inner circle of the big one? What are those things in there? The best I can describe it is that that's how it looks when it comes out of the box. Out of the cube. Right. The cube is everything for these things. You'll see that over and over. Wow. I can see that now. Um, and the, what are the in the front one as well? It looks like there's the a whole bunch. It looks like the sun, the rays of the sun. Right. What does that mean? To, what does that mean to be? My cardinal directions. Okay. All right. There's 15 points. Again, I'm not going to get too much into any of that because it all means something. Yeah, look, at the, look at the writing. That's another yeah, introduction to Logath. Right. So they use the language of God in their magics. Is that what you're saying? The language of heaven, yes. Heaven. The circle inside the circle is, it does spin clockwise, but it can also spin counterclockwise too. Mm -hmm. Notice the behind that in that small circle, another key of Solomon has open points. Yeah. So the tips are open. It all means something. So I wish I could tell you more, but it's really dangerous to play with. Right. No, I think Again, that's we'll great. Fit, we'll fit it together. When, when you learn some more about this, the other ones, there's no first step, second step. It, they all kind of work hand in hand. How many how many cubes are in that 
back one. Is that four? It looks like four to me, but I, one, two, three. It's just four. one, but they turn, they, it's spinning. All right, I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> so it's one that spins and spins and creates, obviously. Well, here's an interesting thing about that. <clears throat> you heard of orbs. Yes. That's a cube that spins. Creating an orb, just like you see right in front of you. So, uh, I mean, are orbs good or bad? Depends. Right. So there's good and bad. It works both ways, right? Right. So talking about orbs and this here, because so let's say someone is wanting to spy on you, let's say something. Could they then send an orb to you in your space? I would rather say that. Elementals use a lot of those things because that's their primary magic is elemental. This, this is kind of elemental magic on a basic level. This is introductory magic. It's not It's not high level at all. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So the, the Fae, is, if you know what the Fae are, the Fae. The Fae's, yeah, like fairies and things and anything right. like the nature spirits. Correct. Trolls use it. I have to say Bigfoot and all of the other things people see. It's just so like built in. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. It's built into how they are. It's part of their nature. So they have these things literally call it in their DNA or in their essence, in their soul, in their spirit. They have these things that make them, that give them some of the powers that they have, right? Correct. In a, in a real simple sense, yes. Yeah. Like a dog can see in different colors? Yes. It's like that kind of. The cryptids have this built into them so they are able to use it. Are they, yeah, do they, they, are they actually taught it? Or is it no, just it's, it's a part of them. thing? Right. Okay. So it's like something they know how to do from when they're literally born. It was once part of all of us. I was going to say. <laughs> wow. Okay. Cool. Is there anything else on there that you want to highlight? I wish I could, but I'd be teaching you. Okay. No, that's fine. Just as okay, awesome. All right. So I want to just say, you know, like obviously for me, illusion magic, and I think for a lot of people who don't really know this thing, uh, it's sort of the David Copperfields of the world, right? So they are used to call them the stage magician magicians, right? So these guys. Are they taught that stuff? Because I know you can go to like, I mean, most of the, well, these guys go to ma magic college or whatever it is. So they would then um, maybe be taught how to use that illusion magic, right? Um, in the, uh, as, as like a optical, is it more like an optical illusion? I would imagine for the masses, that sort of thing. The stage magicians are the speculative magicians, and the people like myself are the ones who actually do the the magic. Right. But it is an introduction to it. So, would you say that they, you know, like with everything <clears throat> that we learn about the occult and the arcane, or, and especially on the dark side? Uh, there's like a cover they use, like even with the Masons, you're going to have like this lower level Masons doing their parties and things at the same time, the higher level ones are underground and doing all sorts of other dodgy things. But right. the, and th same with the church, they'll have their cover. They have people living cover lives. So that creates the initial um, sort of perspective, I guess of what it's about but when you get further into it it starts becoming a lot more intricate a lot more powerful a lot more self-serving i would imagine as well right 
Correct. Speculative and what's the other word I was thinking of? I just had it and I lost it. But not practical, but <clears throat> the Masons, Masons do that a lot. So the speculative people are the ones that just talk about it. They don't do it. The objective ones are the ones that go and cut stones for real. Right. Wow. I think that's what you're getting at there. Wow. Okay. Wow. Just a just an interest, just a, qu a question I have. Were you taught stage magic? Was that part of your introduction? So you no. were like, okay, why not? Why were you not taught that? Didn't need to. Wasn't the point okay. for me. All right. So you, so am I correct in saying or assuming that you were already born with more advanced gifts? So you weren't. It wasn't necessary for you to go through those initial stages. I just had a different purpose. Okay. Cool. Okay. So. Let's look at um, some of the ways that illusion magic would be used in in why why it's used. How is it used? So can you maybe start by explaining to us? I know you and I were having uh, chats off air, and you said something about <laughs> finding doorways that everyone else can't see. Correct. You don't like referring to Harry Potter, but, and I understand that. So when I refer to, please understand that's my only um, kind of context that I have. So what I'm thinking there is like, if we think of the train station scenes where they would go get onto the train, get onto a certain platform in a normal, in a normal train station where everyone else has got trains going as well but they have a certain train and a certain number platform. And then at a certain time, boom, they've all got to go through like a portal thing. And then they get onto their train that takes them to Hogwarts. So um, I would imagine that is something similar where you would have certain doors that only you can see. Is that correct? Well, the gifted can see the ones with the aptitude. Yes. Right. So when you say the ones with the aptitude, are, are there people that are trained to see these doors or are you, again, born with that gift that you I'm can born. see them? Okay, right. Born with it. Okay, so now explain to us why you would want to go through a door like that. What would the purpose of going through a door? Where are you going to? Like I said, I never did anything without a purpose. To me, just being somewhere, there's always a reason for me to be there. So I, I might be on a date, let's say, a dinner date to eat some dinner someplace. Part of the illusion is that date. The date doesn't know what's going on, but I do. I'm there to do whatever it is that I was sent to do or I meant to do. And I know there's a door there that I can go through. So I'll go into the bathroom, quote unquote, and to everybody around me, it seems like I just came right back, but I've been gone for two hours, that type and sort of thing. Wow. So you would, okay, so again, now we're talking about time. So again, time is not linear, right? No, so it's we not. Would then, so let's say we're having dinner at a restaurant here. And you'd go, okay, I'm going to the bathroom. And you might, in, in my time, you might stay away for five or ten minutes, right? But right. meanwhile, you've gone through a, a, a doorway, gone to do something on another level, speaking to someone else, whatever it might be, doing a whole different mission. And then you come back through that same doorway and only five minutes have passed here. Right. Might have been two or three hours. Right. Wow. You, as my date, might experience a time slip or two here and there. What is a time slip? 
missing time. Uh huh. <laughs> so okay. Oh my goodness, where's all the time gone? Felt right. like half an hour. Meanwhile, it was three hours later, or three hours, and it only felt like half an hour. Wow. Or it was a half so, hour and a three hours. Yeah. So would you then do that kind of enchantment on me? Or is it just something that happens if I'm in your presence and you are busy doing that? It would be in my presence as I was doing that. <laughs> Must be my interesting date for sure. I, know. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you that I was doing it. No, of course, yeah. I get that. It would just be just you, you, being in your presence then and the fact that you were doing that would then naturally haul me into that so again, space bubble. Mm -hmm. This is getting into every other magic. They all kind of work hand in hand. And that's called right. a time bubble. Wow. A time bubble has a linear space and volume, but you can control how much time slows or speeds up in that bubble. And even who it affects. So, do you speed up the time or slow it or down? Slow it, yes, you can affect it. Uh, Misty May wants to know could you take someone with you? And I was about to actually ask the same question. So, that might be an involuntary thing, like let's say for me sitting there as a passenger um without knowing any different but let's say uh you said okay well i will want to go there come with me is it possible that i could go with you into that other time zone if i'm um not au fait with that level of magic i'm just a normal not if you don't have that level of magic okay so you have to you have to be adept at that as well Right. At the very least, yes. Right. So this is actually like, do you create these doorways? Like, I mean, if you look at a door in a house, it's there. It's there with a purpose. So it would be standing in the house the same time every day. You, there's certain doorways, right? Can you create like a doorway, like you create a portal? Yes, it's possible. But think of it this way. <clears throat> If I were to do that, instead of having the door open from right to left, you would see it as a normal door, right? I would have it open from left to right. I would open by having it fall flat or lift up. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be weird. There's that word again. <laughs> weird, you're weirding me out here. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get that. I get that. It must be warded. W a r d e d. Warded means protected. Okay. Wow. So you can't do this through a. Fabric. Right. Sorry, my internet seems to be playing up every now and again. So, so it wants to like. Okay, sorry, uh, my internet. So it's not, you can't do this through a rift, right? It's got to be one of the magic, call it them the magic doors that you would either see or you would know where they are or you can create it for yourself in that moment. Is that right? It's not a right. rift. This is, you, can't, you can't do this through a rift because as you said, if we fall into a rift or something, you don't often know where we go, right? Right. Yeah. A rift is a rip. A doorway yeah. or a portal is a deliberate. Interesting. Paul has just uh, commented here. Yeah, athletes can get into a time bubble. Time seems to slow and vision increase. You are in the zone. Kind of a man. Back with skydivers as well. I know quite a few friends who are skydivers. And I mean, my one friend said to me, he doesn't jump jump out of the airplane he jumps into the ocean of gas he calls like the air you know um the ocean of gas and then for he can you know in the time he's in the air like everything slows down i mean he does unbelievable acrobatics and stuff 
in the air, right? Which, I mean, upside down, I mean, well, I say, you don't want to be near me when the ocean of gas falls out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Tuesday. Thank you for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But that's very interesting, though. So with normal people, like without necessarily going into, you know, the magic, like as you say, with athletes, people like that who do maybe extreme sports, like, you know, if you're walking on a tightrope across the Grand Canyon, right, you're going to have to be so in the zone. It's like time slows down. I've had that, you know, when I've, like, I've narrowly missed car accidents or stuff. It's like everything, it just slows down. And it's like, I know it. I mean, for example, when I was living in Thailand, I damn near got into, I don't, I honestly don't even know if I would have been alive. But it's, I got into a situation when I was riding my bike. And it's like, I knew I was like losing control, but something in me suddenly slowed down. And I looked and I could see the cars and the bikes coming, but I knew they weren't going to hit me. Um, I could see them slow down and then I could move into a space where I was safe and I didn't even fall. And the guy like said to me, how the hell did you do that? I said, I have no idea. Um, do you know what I'm saying though? So it's like things like that in those extreme situations. <clears throat> is And she she fell into a time bubble. <laughs> I could say yes. I know what that means because I did a lot of things called dynamic entries. You go through a door explosively usually and somebody's shooting at you. So how do they not hit you? <laughs> Other than God's blessing, I'm not sure, but time definitely slows down there for damn sure. Exactly. It's like when it's you're looking at the matrix. Sorry, sorry, Caleb. Can just say that again? It's real similar to that. Right. Again, for those of us who've seen the movie The Matrix, where N Neo, like, literally uh, dodges bullets, right? You know, you see them coming, and you just kind of move your head away in that way. So that's obviously not... It's not um, using magic, but would you say when you're in alignment with God, you can get into these situations as well? You can be um, in a time bubble. God puts you in one. I was just fearless when I was doing that. I had no fear. I would go through See, it. And I'd come out of that on the other side. And I'd have rounds in my plate carrier and my chest, sometimes my helmet. And sometimes my weapon, and I would I would have stripes on my face from how close the bullets were. They're super hot when they go by you. They will actually give you like a small sunburn, so you get burned. Very, 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 very dangerous thing to do. But here I am, still here. Wow, makes a lot of sense. Okay, so, so that's that, that, that time bubble situation. It's real similar to that. But it won't affect me, it'll, it'll affect everybody around me for about a hundred feet. Wow. So you see the glitch in the matrix videos where something's frozen? Somebody just freezes all of a sudden. You ever seen those? Wow. Yeah. Somebody's Gosh, cat well, time bubble, I'm sure. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing. It's just one oh. thing, one form of magic. It's not even illusion, <laughs> but they, they all time together. So. Yeah, I believe that. Have you been in a situation, speaking about that, if you're talking about like bullets that like literally leave stripes across your face, um, would you have been in a situation where you actually see them coming to you? 
and you literally can duck away? No. I have seen them come towards me. They're called tracers. Right. Yeah, wow. They're really okay. scary stuff like the explosives. Bombs. Bombs are really scary. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, so if the okay, so that would be one way of doing it. Um, the doorways. So, what other way is illusionary magic used then? In what other areas? Infiltration. Mm -hmm. Infiltration. Okay, so let's talk about that. What is what type of infiltration are we talking here? I did it to churches. You naughty boy. <laughs> okay, so when you say you infiltrated churches, can you? Okay, so when you talk about infiltration, I'm assuming you don't need to have a magical doorway to go through. You just go like you can maybe just go to a church, right, as a normal person. But what are you doing and how do you infiltrate there? What, what would be the process in the church? As a master, be for my purposes what I wanted. As a learner or a novice or an adept, is doing something in somebody else's bidding, in other words. They'll send you there to check up on something or whatever. What do you mean doing somebody else's bidding? I'm not with you on that. Another master that you're learning from. Okay. So how would you do his bidding? What would he want? Give me an example. Like a, like a plumber that wants you as a helper. Yeah. Whatever. So would he want souls? Would he want to corrupt a pastor? Would he want as a, as a learner? No, not souls. We, we were there to cast spells in the building. And what would the what would the the, the rune magic? Why would, sorry, what type of magic? Rune, are you any magic? Okay, but what are you trying to do with the spells you're casting? What do you want? Get people to walk on them and curse themselves or get caught up in a spider web or whatever it is. Right. Wow. Or you have it in so your hand. You'd have it in your hand and touch somebody with it. Don't let people touch you. Wow. Interesting, you know, often you go to church and then the pastor or whatever and a few of his uh, helpers or whatever standing at the door after the sermon and shaking your hand or whatever it is. What is that or the about? greasy, oily, way too friendly person that you feel like something's wrong with? Chances are there's something wrong with them. They want to touch you and pat you on the back or whatever. Don't let them do it. Wow. 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 So what about... Chaos, chaos magic is red magic, by the way. Just to answer a question. Okay, we want to go, we want to go a little bit more into the colors and things as well. Okay, yeah, it has, so... It has everything to do with those colors and what you choose. You're always making a deal with something somewhere. That's why I'm not super eager to, to tell you everything. Then I want you to make a deal with something you don't even know about. So, um, what is the way, let's say, if you are in the business where you're shaking people's hands, I mean, everyone, like, whether it's in business deals or, as you say, in the church or anywhere, really, you know, you're meeting someone, you're shaking their hand, what is a good way to protect yourself 
from any of those spiderwebby rooney things. Always pray. Right. Always be praying. And there is something I want to address with at, at the end of the show here. Right. Okay. <clears throat> So infiltrations in churches, uh, magic. So and how would you politics and music and business, mm -hmm. not just churches? It's yeah, the same playbook. Yeah. So, like, we're looking at uh, musicians and movie stars, the celebrities. I would imagine then, and definitely, if you're saying politicians, they are as dodgy as anything. Um, so Don't let him kiss your baby. Sorry? Don't let him kiss your baby. <laughs> or sniff him. <laughs> Joe Biden. Disgusting. <laughs> or sniff him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so gross. Okay, so, okay, let's talk about that then. What, how would they be using illusion magic, let's say, with uh, music artists and actors and actresses? Well, they want to invoke what they've signed up for. So they're going to use the illusion, illusion magic on you to get worship from you to them. Right. And they give it in turn to whoever they made a deal with. Ah, uh, so they like suck the energy. Yes. By you worshipping them and by you... It's a form of soul them. magic. Right. So you make them... Wow. So by us um, uh, idolizing, that's why they call us... The, who's your idol, right? Who's your idol? So by us right. idolizing movie stars or, or, or musicians or anyone famous, a politician or anything like that, right? Um, by us idolizing them, that's how they use that as, as you say, a form of soul magic, which means we go to their concerts, we pay the price. Look at Taylor Swift recently. There's been so much talk about her and her things that she does on stage there. So you give permission. That's how you give permission, by paying and by going. And then that's how they would absorb your energy, right? Is that what you're saying? Permission and agreement, yes. Wow. They're your and idol. They're your god with a small g. Right. And that would then be the same thing, actually, in churches. Correct. you analyzing what the preacher is telling you. Or who the preacher is. Not, not necessarily what he's telling you, but who he is. He's a new rock star. And very, uh, yeah, he's very often he's not what he portrays himself to be. No. Wow. So, what were you doing in churches with the preachers and things? Like I said, it was just whatever corruption mostly. So, were you, would you like tempt them with stuff? I wouldn't tempt him with anything. I was just there to, to cast spells. Right. And then they would tempt themselves after. So if they got caught up in it, they would then do whatever they were doing and not necessarily to or with you, right? Right. Wow. They also wanted to create slaves for whatever they wanted to do. <laughs> they call them the, 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 uh, the drow. Yeah. The Draugr in, in Norse mythology. And Drow in Old German is drag. So Draugr is a dragger, so like a zombie. So I'm trying to get it. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I see a lot of them okay. on their cell phones. Exactly. Just like with these, exactly. Looking at their cell phones, not being aware. Not quite full-blown jogger, but they're really close. <laughs> Jessica, Caleb with a quarter, just 
disgusting spell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking, like you sitting in the back of the church. <laughs> was that what you were doing, sitting in the back of the church, doing these things? In a sense, yes. <laughs> oh, go to doorways, go to doorways and cast the room on the floor. Until somebody broke that kid in that room, it was going to work every time. Every time you went to the bathroom, you're going to walk over it. If you're not covered, you're not protected, it's going to impact or affect you somehow. Wow. So then whoever's whatever uh, 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 dirty spirits are then presiding over that is like watching everyone there, like with beady, spidery eyes, right? To right. see who's not, yeah, who's not covered. Sometimes it was to affect what was being said. Think of a marionette, preachers of marionette. So I could I could say what I wanted him to say under my breath, and he would say it out loud. I could tell you he was not spirit filled and he wasn't a real preacher. He was a he was a dragger, a jogger, or a zombie. Wow. So you would then pretty much uh via ESP, if you will, tell him what to say, like a marionette. Do the silver cord, yes. Wow. Um, I was just I wanted to actually ask you as well, and I think let me just see ask this question here. Yeah? Uh, that uh, Paul Jesse talks about the spells put on buildings. That's right. Um, how do we defeat them? It's actually a good question. Well, you have authority over this world now, and that includes everything in it. So you can break it just by saying, I, I break this in the name of Jesus or by the covering of the blood or by Yeshua's strength. And say any of those things, and as long if as you, have you faith are faith in what you're saying, right? And if you what have God in you, right. you can operate in that authority. That's what I was going to say. As long as you have God's, the real Christ in your heart, it'll break that authority, not just any right. old um, thing. So you have to be true. You have to be. You have to have real faith. Yes. Wow. Lisa, do you ever see Mark Zuckerberg testifying before Congress and the guy sitting behind him, mouthing what he were, what he was saying and mimicking his facial expressions? So true. So true. And that's how they did with politicians like as well, right? It's a lot like that. Wow. And it's so true, Lexi Abbey, congregation is to spiritual discernment. And this is how they've infiltrated the churches. That's why I say the church is the infiltrator. They infiltrate the people. <clears throat> right. Wow. Okay. So that then they would do, and I mean, I would imagine then when you're looking at the same thing, not just music concerts, but then by with the words of songs as well, right? Lyrics, song lyrics. Mm -hmm. And actors playing certain roles in movies, let's say, uh, doing certain acting parts, having certain lines, right? That would really get to people and maybe um, draw out people's emotions. Now, that's an interesting one because I think, you know, we were talking about louche, obviously, you know, because the louche is our emotions. It can be good or bad, really. They have a way of getting to our emotion. Yes, through war and craziness. Um, they get to us through chaos, but also it could be good emotions as well, right? You could be watching a very emotional movie and bringing everyone to tears. So would that be on a similar vein? Exactly. So we can think it's a good thing. We can think it's a beautiful movie with a great message and it makes us cry every time, right? Because it's so touching. Now, how do we know then? It's like, you know, even with, with, with musicians and things, I mean, it's not like the Kiss, the band Kiss, all these hectic guys that are sticking out their tongues and 
painting their faces and singing satanic lyrics. Um, how do we know when when there are musicians and actors and actresses, and even though they seem to be putting a beautiful message out there, that that is true? And because I don't believe everything is bad, for sure not. You know, there's there's a lot of good as well. But how do we know when we're looking at these things? And even politicians, I mean, I know there's a great, like, especially with Trump at the moment as well, there's a lot of people following Trump. And I don't, I'm not saying Trump is bad, but I'm just saying when people follow him like he's a god or a demigod, that's a problem for me because you immediately just creating something outside of yourself, which is not your truth and it's not direct with God. Um, yeah, Gene Simmons. Um, but so how do we know, even when something seems to be good, that it is good? How do we know that? We are asked, are told to test the spirits, the trees don't by its fruit, so just watch what they're all about. See what they're all about first. It's true. Who they who you have in faith in the creature or the creator? Ask that second. <clears throat> wow. And always remember God can use anything, anything to talk to you somehow. He's the donkey once to talk to a guy. Yes. Speaking about donkeys, I mean that's yeah, that that's happening. Yes. Yes. Speaking about donkeys, this is something I've always been interested in, and I might be digressing a little bit, but this is an interesting topic for me. The donkey is the most sacred creature in Christian religion, right? Because it literally carried Christ. Um, but why then is it the most abused animal, and why is it not more revered in religion? Why are people allowing donkeys to be so abused? <laughs> It's not my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> There's a long, that? sharp pick again. <laughs> I know. What can I say? <laughs> but it doesn't it make you think. Come on. Doesn't it make you think? And if you look on a donkey's back, it's got a cross, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and, the, and it's true. The word jackass. I mean, it's really... And I love donkeys were one of the first creatures I could really have a connection with. They are amazing. I love donkeys. They are the cutest, funniest creatures around. And I just wish more people would would give them more love because really they're the sacred animal in the Christian faith. So every Christian should go out and adopt a donkey. Let your local donkey sanctuary guys adopt donkey and make sure you support it for a year. That's what we do here. I support three. Anyway. Um, so that even is now, mm -hmm. even now you can start to see how all this is going to blend together at some point. It already does. It makes it, yeah, I know, but there's a lot more after this so it's a lot of new ones yeah <laughs> okay so we're looking we've now looked at the politicians which to me they're the same as movie actors and actresses um literally because very often especially when you're looking at musicians right i mean and i know that that uh Beyonce was one that I actually saw her being interviewed on Oprah many years ago and she has an entity called Sasha Fierce that enters. She says even the minute she's about to go on to a show, she has this entity energy come into her body and literally then she starts dancing and moving and singing in a way that she can't do um, when she doesn't have such a fears. So um, I like that. I got a donkey. I like that. <laughs> um, so my point is that I think a lot of these actors, actresses, uh, movie, uh, uh, sorry, uh, musicians especially, have entities working through them. 
that literally take over when they do a performance and stuff like that? What is your channel? Yes. So they're channeling another entity. So they basically make way for, so their spirit or their soul would move out of their body for that space in time, I would imagine, right? And then right. this other, the one that can sing and dance and do its thing and then takes over for the duration of that performance. Is that what happens? Yep, in a nutshell, yes. Wow. And the illusion there would be that it is Beyonce, but in fact, it's not really Beyonce. Right. Right? Correct. Wow. The illusion is it's Taylor Swift, but it's not really Taylor Swift because she's been pretty much part of the system since forever and a day. Wow. Okay, and then, but then talking about channeling, so would you then say that when we're looking at mediums and channelers, that that's the same thing? For the illusionists, yes. Real channelers almost always die channeling. What, now, what do you what do you mean when you say a real channeler? If you say you're going to channel me a spirit, it's going to kill you. You're not going to live through that. Why not? You can't. Not those spirits. So they would then. I mean, there are a lot of people who claim to be channeling. Higher, 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 higher vibrating beings, or whatever it is, right? And even yeah, if they world. are channeling Nephilim and shit like that, um, they still make way in their body for this entity to move in so yeah. that you can. What does Jesse call the little ones? Sorry? What did Jesse call the little ones? You know, like chicken shit demons. Yeah, the little ones are the. The tricksters. Yeah. That's what's using them as a puppet. The real spirits that they, that they say that they're using or channeling will kill that individual. Wow, that's true. So if that is it because it's too a higher voltage, if you will, for the body? Yes. Body can't survive that. Wow. So did you have a channel? No. Hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no. I did not. Okay. That's interesting. Um, uh, okay. Let's, okay. Now I have my, my final sort of question around this is the military, because I'm sure that these things are happening in the military as well. All this illusion. I mean, you talking about. I mean, one thing I remember you saying is that one of the funniest things that that you think that you can remember is like literally being in the jungle somewhere or wherever in some remote part of the world, and the next minute a CIA guy pops through <laughs> the portal in a pink golf shirt, <laughs> giving you instruction. Right. Hi. To me, that's very funny. Um, so how is illusion magic used in the military? Think of Shinoda. You can spell that for him. S-C-H-I-N-O-D-A. S-H-I-N-O-D-A. Shinoda. Okay, what is Shinoda? Can you just, can you clarify what Shinoda is? Ninjas. Hmm. I think of ninjas. Okay, when I think of a ninja, I think of Japanese or, yes, Japanese ninjas flying through the air with a sword. And that's what I think of as a ninja. 
That's not no, all they did. Right. You have to look it up. It was tactics. It was hiding in plain sight. It was infiltration. It's the illusion magic. Okay, yes. But is that real illusion magic, though? Or are they, can it's they actually like do that? Remote viewing is actually astral projection. They don't call it astral projection. They call it remote viewing. Right. Shinoda is illusion magic. They just don't call it illusion magic. It's the lowest high art. Wow. Okay. So when we look at, for example, the... I think of the the Norse, I think they called the berserkers. Those guys. What it, what would you say that, that is? Berserkers are just people who act like bears. Does that word mean just bears? But don't they take on another sort of a shape? They go into like a trance-like state. And then they, they fight. They take on the nature of a cave bear. Okay, so that we talk. She's yeah. In a, you're in a time bubble there. Didn't hear what you said. <laughs> Is it, I think you're in a time bubble there. <laughs> you know, you froze up. Uh, again, that's possible because my internet is putting me in a time bubble tonight. Okay, so <clears throat> so I'm saying that obviously then, okay, so berserkers, that sort of thing, that would not be the same thing that we're talking about here. No. Okay, cool. Then we leave that for another day. Um, but, uh, okay, so the military moving through, um, as you say, like the ninja shinodas, which are like the ninjas, so it's the illusion. They can, they create that illusion that they're flying through the air. Is that what you're saying? And then they assassinate people with whether it's a sword or a gun or whatever. There's a whole lot more to it than that. Well, can yes. you just, can you can you explain a little bit? As much as well, I'm very I'm well aware you can talk about it. It would okay. take its own show. Okay. Well, then we're going to make and we're going to make a show about that. <laughs> can we? Sure. All right. Well, anything else about the military in terms of illusion magic? Infiltration, hiding in plain sight. It's all like illusion spies. magic. Like spies. Yes. So the spies, let's say, um, there's Russian or spies or American spies, whatever. They would know the doorways to go through. Yeah, this is not just one magic being used one time once here. They all tie together. Yeah. So what we're doing now is we're breaking it down into the separate ones. How long does it take? How long does it take, let's say, for the average magician to learn let's say illusion magic if you're now becoming part of the arcane and you start to study right give me an idea a year five years could be five minutes oh, okay <laughs> it's magic <laughs> right. okay if you have oh. the aptitude you can learn any of that how long did it take you to learn this particular level? To master, it took about three years. Wow. Very interesting. And then you, and I, I know I've asked you before as well. Um, obviously, when you were, guys were doing your military uh, combat missions, you would have no doubt 
used your knowledge there. You can learn a lot from the animal kingdom too. Oh yes. And my MOS is a O317 or a sniper, reconnaissance sniper. First thing they teach you is don't get scope focused, keep both eyes open, and don't look at anybody. Look at the, your peripheral vision. If you look at somebody, they can feel you looking at them. When you said don't and stare, focus on me. Don't stare Sorry. at somebody who can, can feel that happening. Right. Yeah, you often hear scope about focus that. Scope means you're looking through the scope and you, you only see that one small window. Keep both your eyes open and don't get scope focused and you'll miss something. Your peripheral vision is designed to pick up movement. So you're always not staring at any one thing, you're looking at everything. That's a form of illusion magic. Yeah, and then you become so like, a, like, like compound eyes. Not necessarily that, no, but kind of. Yeah, Simone is saying something interesting. Yeah, I, th I, I agree. But as Simone, as uh, I think Caleb was saying earlier, that you have to have, uh, you know, you have to be, uh, probably you will have to start as a child before the prefrontal cortex gets too strong, Caleb. Depends on your aptitude. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, be like a helicopter. It has nothing to do with your age. But I would imagine the younger they get you, the more you able they more the more they're able to train. The more they can put you out there as a youngster. Yeah. What they and did weaponize. And weaponize you. Right. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. I think that's the prefrontal cortex too strong thing. That's just them stripping you of your gifts. So that is that their indoctrination is stripping your gifts. Wow, that makes perfect sense actually, because as you say, a long time ago we all had this knowledge, we all had these gifts until we were stripped of it, and now it's used for the dark, right? They use right. it. They use it for themselves and they strip the average human of these natural gifts that we all really have. Right. And if, if you think about it, like uh, I've talked a lot about soul magic and whatnot. I talk about gems, I talk about gold, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, here in this reality, those things are dead for the most part, those gems and gold and all that. In the heavenly realms, those things are alive. They're like fruit. They're really good, good, good food. You can eat gold. Living gold. What does it taste like? Heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's like really, really good bread. Gems you can squeeze like fruit, get juice out of them. Most delicious juice you've ever heard in your life. So, where do you get them? Not here. Here, almost everything is dead. You have to yeah, be there yeah. to experience it. Yeah. We'll have to talk about something called primary water sometime, too. Primary living water. water. Living water. Living water. That was a philosopher's stone was to find living water. Not gold. What is okay, so what is so what does living water give you? Give us a little clue. What is that about? The river of life. Ha ah, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That makes sense. Healing. Makes sense. 
that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, yes, Simona, uh, it would be, that would be the manner. And now, isn't that interesting though? I want to just go back to the whole, the whole Tartaria thing because water was a very powerful healing uh, 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 resource that they used, right? Uh, water that they used to heal. They'd have like water clinics where people, did, they didn't have hospitals, they had water clinics where mm. they were using water. So I would imagine that would be... Primary water. water. Yeah. Primary water is not recycled water. It's brand new. When you say brand new, where does it come from? From God. But where on earth would you find it? In the rivers, in the in the oceans, where? In the mountains? Squeak. <laughs> come now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, when we talk about the philosopher's stone, I could say a lot more about it then. Okay. We're definitely going to be doing a show on that as well, Living Water, the Philosopher's Stone. Primary water. Primary water. I'll give a tidbit. Yeah. Find fresh dew. And then you drink it off. If you, the, if you can collect fresh dew. Not off of cloth or anything, but off of leaves. Yes. That's about as close as you're going to get to primary water naturally. Wow. That's quite incredible. Very incredible, actually. That's why they dammed up our water then. Uh, yes, I would imagine. Right. So Lizanne says when she was playing with Wicca, she was do dancing. You know about do dancing. There's a ritual involved with that for sure. So that's why I'm not saying much now. I want to tie it all together with everything else when it comes to time. Okay, perfect. I mean, there's always a purpose for everything. But that primary water is from the river of life. Some people call it the fountain of youth, but it's the river of life. It flows from under God's throne. Okay, well then, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, is there anything that you can still tell us that I might have missed or from... The illusion magic, I know, as I said, and I'm going to reiterate, we're not being taught anything yet, but Caleb is giving us the basics and the understanding. Um, right. I just tied in soul gems to the whole thing. Right. If you know what I've been talking about with that, you understand what they do with those now. Yes, I do. They squeeze the soul gems to get their juice, their louche. In a manner of speaking. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it Man. took forever to say it, but if I had just said that in the beginning, nobody would have got it. I know. Now we do. Wow. I agree, Misty May. It, it is a bit sad, uh, most definitely. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's what happens when we don't believe that we, um, when we align with God, anything for us is possible. We don't have to steal anything from anyone. Okay, last question. Caleb, what were your trainers like? Can you just answer that for Greg? You ask that question a lot. They're a lot like me. <laughs> I'm a lot like them. So uh, uh, let me let me uh, let me let me uh, expand on that. Smart, intense, uh, non-trusting, um, hawk-eyed. I would say when I say hawk-eyed, I mean like watching everything 
very and like sharks maybe so they're beautiful from a distance but you don't want to get too close to them yeah <laughs> right very clever well, I was a master mason years ago my 25th degree mason or I was Night of the Brazen Serpent. So like that. Cool. Okay. Well, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to end off with us for us, Caleb? Well, I wanted to talk about the health stuff and whatnot. I wanted to, to address something real quick. <clears throat> For sure. This is not easy for me to present this stuff to you guys. And I know that um, it's hard when I'm not there during the weeks. It's hard on me. The story's been a long time coming, and I do struggle through it. I, I suffer through it a lot. Yeah, price, I get attacked a lot. And instead of pulling the rug off from somebody else or exposing anybody or anything else. I'm going to do what God said to do. I want to pray for my enemies. I'm going to wish them blessings and peace so that someday they can they can step forward and say, I was the one that was cursing you and attacking you. And I can say, well, I forgive you. I forgive you in advance because I love you. They don't blame me for attacking me. I would attack me if it was me. But I'm not going to attack back. I'm going to pray for you. I know who you are. I'm going to pray for you anyway. I'm going to ask God to bless you with life, not death. I'm asking the, the people here as a whole collective. I don't know how many followers you have here, but no, I'm not saying do this, but say, for instance, we all gave 50 cents a month to, to each other. We would be out of debt. We we pay all our everything. We're family. We're supposed to be that way. So, when you hear me suffering, or if you, I reveal something to you, it's not because I have to explain myself or anything else. This is, this is a fight. This is a battle. I say, keep your heads down. Keep your shields up on purpose because that's we you protect yourself. I need the same protections. I, I need the same help. I'm not asking for people to come to my house and carry me around or anything else. Just prayer. Specific prayers. And so I thank you for all those things. But for those that are doing the attacking, I, I pray for you and I ask God to bless you in Jesus' name. That's true love right there. It's not hate. I'll, I'll do this as long as I can. As long as I can. I agree. Love thy enemy. It's like what Jesus said when he was crucified. Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Exactly. They don't know. They don't have a clue. It's a bit like what I was what I was saying now when uh, when you were talking about the loose and the crystals and <laughs> the juice, right? It's when people think that they need somebody else's loosh that they do that. There's a reality out there that is far more real than here, let me tell you. Mm. That's what we're all heading towards. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for everyone who's always here. Really appreciate you guys. And Caleb, I really appreciate you. This is incredible information you're sharing with us. And we appreciate you so much. Thank you again for everything you do. And I know that obviously every time you talk, every time you share these things, there are those dark entities and those dark forces that do not want you to share this information. And yes, there are people that come onto our chats and onto our pages and onto our platforms who pretend to be very cool, but 
they're actually not. And those are the attackers. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we are bound by our own words and our own actions. I had that dream and I actually was telling Caleb about it the other night. Um, I had such a, thank you, Stacy. Um, I had a, such a profound dream the other night and I was literally talking to God where God said to me, we are bound by our own words, thoughts and actions. And I mean, I always, I know this stuff. It's, I mean, I've been teaching it for years, but it was such a profound, crystal clear dream and it just made things so much clearer for me. Um, and I saw in the dream how I had actually my hands tied behind my back in certain instances. And just by releasing certain thoughts, my hands were free again. So when we do things that are uncool towards anyone else and anything else, that our own actions bind us. They keep us restricted. They keep us in shackles. So when we release that and when we love others and forgive them, we set ourselves free. Right. Cool. Thank you, Caleb. Unless there's something else you want to say, maybe you want to end up for us in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another good day. Thank you for more sleep that's coming. Help me to get through this recovery and everything else I'm going through here. I put it in your hands. This is your fight. It's not mine. Help me to keep giving it to you. Protect us and be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Caleb. And thank you so much to everyone for being here again this evening. I really appreciate you. And yeah, if you like what we're putting out there, please like, share, subscribe. And I just ask you to share this information far and wide. If you guys can just share these shows with Caleb, um, it's incredible. I think the more people who know this information, the better. Might just do something, touch someone's heart and get them to release their shackles. God bless you all. Mm -hmm. Take good care. I shall see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.